Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and this time I'm playing in the Tier 7 American light tank, the T-71, which until recently was an unpopular vehicle as it was always living in the shadow of its Tier 7 American light tank counterpart, the M41 Walker Bulldog. The M41 Walker Bulldog was more popular for a variety of reasons. Number one would be the fact that it had a gigantic magazine. Ten rounds of 76mm ammunition able to do 150 damage per shot, making the Walker Bulldog a able to kill the entirety of higher tiered heavy tanks in a single magazine. Also the Walker Bulldog had an extra degree of gun depression and I believe it was just a touch faster. However, things have changed. 918 is here and Wargaming have completely changed the American light tank tree and also the way that light tanks get matched up in World of Tanks. The T-71 stays at tier 7, while the M41 Walker Bulldog has moved up to tier 8. Now the matchmaking has effectively changed. Previously, the T-71 as a tier 7 light tank could meet tier 6 opponents and also meet tier 10 opponents because it had minus 1 plus 3 matchmaking like all light tanks. However, now it can meet baby tanks like this T-67 as it now gets plus 2 minus 2 matchmaking, meaning it can meet vehicles between tier 5 and tier 9. And so you can kill vehicles, multiple vehicles in a single magazine if you're facing tier 5 opponents. And because of Wargaming's new 9.18 matchmaker system, quite often half of the enemy team in your perfect matchups like this will be two tiers lower than you. Now, of course, now that the T-71 is effectively a whole tier lower, at least with regards to its matchmaking, surely it's had a few nerfs, right? It's lost a little bit of view range, like a lot of light tanks have. It's gone from 400 to 390, but that's still really good for a tier 7 vehicle. And also, the vehicle has lost 30 millimeters of penetration off its standard APCR rounds. The penetration now down to 145, but that's really not very bad, is it? APCR rounds like this would be pretty darn good on a tier 7 medium tank. Of course, there are some tanks like the, the Panther that have exceptional penetration, and even vehicles like the T-20 that I believe have 160 on its standard rounds, but that, that's not too bad. And everything else about the vehicle has remained the same. It has the, the same reload at 20 seconds to put six 76mm shells in the vehicle, and look what you can do to your opponents at lower tiers. You just can absolutely play with them with this magazine. And now that you've got 840 hit points at tier 7, which, sure, it wasn't very good when you were effectively a tier 8 tank, but now at tier 7 it just feels like you've got a lot more to play around with, as we're going to see later on. And the mobility of the T-71 is still as good as ever. Actually, it's a little bit better thinking about it as the vehicle has 20 more horsepower on its engine, while the vehicle weighs nothing more. So, all in all... Is it the new dog on the block? Is it the top dog? What are we going to be calling this tank? I, I haven't really decided fully yet. All I know is that the Walker Bulldog, uh, you can move over. Tier for tier, the T-71 is the new king of what used to be the Tier 7 American light tanks. Now, we're having an absolute storm so far on, Ma on Murvanka. Nearly said Malinovka. Malinovka, another great map for your light tanks. But we're going to go in and show this Firefly what we're all about. This tier 6 British medium tank didn't stand a chance. And I just love the magazine on this vehicle. I almost like it even more than the M41 Walker Bulldog's 10-round magazine. Previously, you'd have to be reloading for at least 30 to maybe 33 seconds. Whereas when you have a skilled crew and you're using a consumable like Kohli, you can get the reload of this vehicle well below 20 seconds. And that's just such a nice magazine. The 900 damage that you can deal to your opponents within 10 seconds of the first shot allows you to just go after tier six heavy tanks, even when they're on full health, like this heavy tank number six, this tier six Japanese premium heavy tank. And even if you bounce one, you're still able to do significant amounts. That's 750 on average that we would have dealt there to that heavy tank number six, picking up our top gun already in this game. And now I get to advance back towards the cap circle to try and stop their flanking medium tanks working the ridge line. Now I just, I cannot believe how much of a buff this effectively is to the T-71. The fact that, to all intents and purposes, it is the, it is the same vehicle, except for having 30 millimeters less penetration on its standard rounds. But for some reason, Wargaming didn't decide to nerf its premium rounds, so if you want to have 210 millimeters of penetration, which is rather darn good for a tier seven vehicle, then just damn that two key. 
Now, unfortunately, it doesn't really carry the highest amount of ammunition, even though we've done 3,500 damage this game, which is way more than you would expect nearly any tier 7 vehicle to have to do to, to get through, as well as pick up 7 kills. And now we've run out of APCR, so we're going to have to start to dip into those heat rounds. And I do recommend that you do keep a, a, a large selection of heat rounds in your vehicles, because when you do start to have to engage, you know, IS-3s, Defenders, E-75s, then the 145mm isn't really going to cut it on the standard APCR rounds. So this is really where I make the first dramatic mistake of the game. You see that I go over the ridge line there, and the 7 degrees of gun depression just simply wasn't enough to be able to work that ridge line. I'm too used to vehicles like the T-49 now with the 90mm that has 10 degrees of gun depression, or even the M41 Walker Bulldog with the single shotgun now, which is the gun that you want to be using on the tier 8 American light tank with 10 degrees. And this is the first time I played the T71 since the 918 patch, and I was certainly surprised by the seven degrees of gun depression this vehicle has. And so that means that I take a whopping amount of damage. I lose about, about 450 hit points there. And so now I can get one shot by that artillery, but luckily the FV304 get spotted in his way towards the cap circle and that was the little tier 6 British self propel gun that I certainly was worried about but now I can make my way in hopefully try and get above my opponents and they're all inside the cap circle we put one inside the M42's turret try and connect the second but now I need to pull back got to watch out for that FV304 trying to shoot us and the Sturitzfang M42 doesn't want to come up onto the ridge line we've got 34 seconds left on the cap not too hard to interrupt these encounters and I swing round until I'm no longer spotted and then I go back up the ridge uh, it's a tactic that you definitely should employ. Trick your opponents into thinking you're going one direction and then change your uh, your momentum. Swing your vehicle around and as we can see the M42 thought that I would be coming from his left there but in fact I went back up and managed to sneak a shot into the top of his turret which now puts us on nine kills. Will we get the pulls medal? No! Ouch! Our team secure the last three kills here. And no, I was, I was hoping for a pools medal in this game. It's not often that you get to pick up 10 kills in World of Tanks, but what a cracking result for my first game in the T-71 since 9.18. And this vehicle is certainly looking like it might be one of the best light tanks in the game tier for tier, uh, at least in my opinion. So you might be thinking, well, surely things can't be that bad for the Bulldog, right? And yeah, let me tell you they are. Look at the autoloader on the Bulldog. It's had its magazine nerfed from 10 rounds to 6 rounds. But for some reason, the reload time is still 36 seconds for an entire magazine. Whereas when we look at the magazine for the T-71, sure, it doesn't quite have the penetration at 145 instead of 175, but while it has the same alpha damage at 150, and the same amount of shells in each magazine, its reload time is 16 seconds less, even though it's a whole tier lower. And so this means that the T-71, when you've got the vehicle fully tricked out, will have 1,904 DPM, that's without brothers in arms, whereas if we look at the M41 Walker Bulldog, 1,360? What are you gonna do if you have to encounter a mouse in the Bulldog? Firstly, fail to penetrate it with your 175 millimeters of standard penetration, then have to dab your two key and pay 5,000 600 a shot and then politely ask him to go make a cup of tea or to be honest probably a little longer maybe go and make dinner because you're gonna have to fire four entire magazines at the tier 10 German super heavy and probably spend about two to three minutes of continuous fire to be able to take him down and so alas the M41 Walker Bulldog definitely one of my favorite go-to vehicles for just pure fun in world of tanks might as well now be called the M41 Walker dead dog but it's not all doom and gloom. Sure, there is a 76mm with higher alpha damage and a good rate of fire that you can use on this vehicle. But if you're lusting after that good old tier 7 auto-loading action, then there certainly is a new dog on the block. So this was 7,551 experience for our double, of course, with a premium account. And I believe I was also using a reserve. What is the base experience? 1,678. That's a pretty good result for a tier 7 vehicle. We get a Radley Walters medal for our 9 kills, a high caliber for the 4,000 damage that we dealt, a tank sniper medal for dealing most of that at long range. And that's something that the T-71 is still rather good at doing with 0.39 accuracy, while most of the tier 10 light tanks are going to be missing at those kind of ranges very often indeed. And so all in all, there's probably never been a better time to dust off the T-71 and take it out for a spin. And while as always, I can't promise you're gonna get as lucky as me, I really feel that the T-71 might be an awesome introduction to higher tiered light tanks and auto loaders for any player 
wanting to step up to the challenge. And so hopefully you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. I'd really appreciate it. And let me know in the comments what you think about the T-71. Do you think it now looks like a very statistically strong tank sitting at tier 7 matchmaking? And what do you think about the M41 Walker Bulldog? Do you think, like me, that Wargaming just forgot to reduce the reload time when they decreased the size of this magazine? Or do you think this is intended to push people away from an autoloader at a higher tier and to use a single shot gun? And also, if you've been playing a load of light tanks in update 918, what are your favorites and why? And which one should I try out for myself? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.